what we see depends mainly on what we look for welcome back to our channel today's topic is lateral periodontal cyst this is a short but a very important topic so watch this lecture carefully till the end so lateral periodontal cyst is a slowly growing non expansile developmental odontogenic cyst it is derived for, from one or more rests of the dental lamina the cyst has an embryonic lining which is 1 to 3 cells thick and these cells are cuboidal in shape the lateral periodontal cyst they appear on the lateral periodontal location as the name implies it appears on the lateral periodontal location of the tooth there is cystic degeneration of the clear cells of the dental lamina so here in this picture you can see the lateral periodontal cyst which has occurred on the lateral periodontal surface of the tooth it is an uncommon lesion but is but it is well recognized and it is present on the lateral root surface of an erupted tooth so this and this uh, cyst is more commonly found in the mandibular bicuspid or the premolar region now talking about the etiology and pathogenesis it is studied in detail by standish and sheffer and they put forth four theories of the pathogenesis of the lateral periodontal cyst according to the first theory lateral periodontal cyst initially originates as a dentigerous cyst along the lateral surface of the crown when tooth is unerupted so in this picture you can see this tooth is unerupted and the dentigerous cyst is associated with this tooth but as this tooth erupts into the oral cavity the cyst assumes a position in approximation to the lateral surface of the root of the teeth now the second theory says that it occurs due to proliferation of the rests of malices in the periodontal lig ligament but the stimulus of this proliferation is unknown thirdly the primordial cyst of a supernumerary tooth germ gives rise to a lateral periodontal cyst and these supernumerary teeth are commonly present in the mandibular bicuspid region so lateral periodontal cyst occurs predominantly in this region now the fourth and the most appropriate theory given by wysocki and his colleagues is that the lateral periodontal cyst occurs due to proliferation and cystic transformation of the rests of the dental lamina in its post functional state that is when the proper functioning of the dental lamina is completed the remnants of the dental lamina undergoes proliferation and cystic degeneration this dental lamina rest have a limited growth potential so the size of these lateral periodontal cystic lesions is small now you can see here that the lateral periodontal cyst and the gingival cyst of the adults they have common histogenesis i have already uploaded a separate lecture on gingival cyst of the adults please do watch it find it in our playlist on oral pathology now there is a common histogenesis in lateral periodontal cyst and the gingival cyst of adults both this cysts they this origin from the post functional dental lamina rests so we can see, say that L, the lateral periodontal cyst and the gingival cyst of adults is intraosseous or central and extraosseous or peripheral manifestation of the same lesion so lateral periodontal cyst is intraosseous or central and gingival cyst of adults is extraosseous or peripheral manifestation of the same lesion now in 1973 weather and waldron described a separate entity that is the botryoid odontogenic cyst the meaning of the word botryoid is cluster of grapes so this particular odontogenic cyst which is called as the botryoid odontogenic cyst is multilocular 
and it resembles the cluster of grapes. Now, this botryoid odontogenic cyst is the polycystic variant of the lateral periodontal cyst and this botryoid odontogenic cyst, it originates due to cystic transformation of multiple dental lamina rest. So, multiple dental lamina rest undergo cystic proliferation to form this botryoid odontogenic cyst. So, this is an easy pictorial diagram in which you can see a botryoid odontogenic cyst which is multilocular present. Now, the clinical features of the lateral periodontal cyst and the botryoid odontogenic cyst we will see here. They mostly occurs in, 20, in adults aged 22 to 85 years. The mean age of occurrence of this lesion is 50 years. Males are affected more than the females. 67% cases occur in the mandibular bicuspid cuspid and the incisor area while only 33 percent cases occurs in the maxillary lateral incisor area the lesion shows minimum signs and symptoms and is found during routine radiography examination the tooth associated with the lesion is vital if infection occurs the lateral periodontal cyst develops into an abscess now the radiographic picture uh, features of the lesion the radiolucent area is found on the lateral surface of the root which is of size less than 1 cm and is surrounded by a thin sclerotic bony margin now botryoid odontogenic cyst is multilocular on radiographic examination so here in this picture you can see the lateral periodontal cyst which is present on the lateral surface of this tooth it is unilocular while in this picture you can see a multilocular botryoid odontogenic cyst present now the histopathology the epithelium is the epithelium of both the lateral periodontal cyst and the botryoid odontogenic cyst is thin it is non keratinized and it is 1 to 5 cell layer thick it resembles the reduced enamel epithelium in which the cells are cuboidal to low columnar. Now, the epithelium also shows clear vacuolated glycogen rich cytoplasm. The lining is thin so it slows away from the connective tissue and focal thickened area, uh, plaques of the epithelium are characteristic feature of the botryoid odontogenic cyst. So, in this diagram you can see the lateral periodontal cyst in which this is the cystic lumen and this is the odontogenic lining in which you can see clear cells at some areas these can be appreciated it is a thin lining of few cells thick and the connective tissue this is the connective tissue capsule this is another picture where you can see this is botryoid odontogenic cyst Sorry, this is the picture of the botryoid odontogenic cyst in which the epithelial has shown proliferation at certain area. So, this is a magnified picture of the proliferated epithelium. This is also called as plaques of epithelium which is characteristically seen in botryoid odontogenic cyst. Now, the connective tissue shows glycogen rich clear cells as well as a zone of hyalinization is characteristically seen just below the epithelium and the cystic wall is quite fibrous so here you can see the epithelium this is the fibrous connect this is the epithelium this is the fibrous connective tissue and below this epithelium you can observe here there is a zone of hyalinization so these are the Ideal histopathologic picture of the lateral periodontal cyst and the botryoid odontogenic cyst. Now the treatment part and prognosis, surgical excision of the lesion is advised. Note that botryoid odontogenic cyst is multilocular. So it is associated with an increased rate of recurrence. So regular follow up should be done in patients with botryoid odontogenic cyst.
नेक्स्ट लेक्चर इज ऑन अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक दैट इज कैल्सिफाइंग ओडोंटोजेनिक सिस्ट सो इफ यू डोंट वॉन्ट टू मिस दिस लेक्चर सब्सक्राइब टू अर चैनल एंड ऑल्सो पुट ऑन द नोटिफिकेशन बेल सो दैट मैन एवर वी अपलोड दिस लेक्चर यू गेट अ नोटिफिकेशन ऑफ इट एंड यू डोंट मिस इट दैट्स ऑल फॉर नाउ स्टे सेफ स्टे होम स्टे हेल्दी एंड हैप्पी स्टडिंग